Okay, this is again actually season one version six, uh, chapter um, six as well. And uh, in this chapter, we're going to discuss the network layer. So if we open up the PowerPoint slides, So the objectives are what is network layer, what it, role it plays, and explain why the IPv4 protocol requires other layers to provide reliability. Explain the role of the major header fields in the IPv4 packet, the role of the major header fields in the IPv6 packet, like the difference in between the IPv4 packet and IPv6 packet. And the routing, what routing does. And finally, what is the router, how to configure a Cisco router. So the network layer, which resides in the OSI Open System Interconnect Layer 3, provides services that allow end devices to exchange um, data across the network, right? So the network layer used for, uses four processes in order to provide end-to-end -end transport. So addressing an end device, what sort of addressing? That is the logical addressing. It is It does like all other uh, layers, it has an encapsulation as well. And the encapsulated PDO protocol data in this encapsulation is called packet. It is the layer where all the routing job happens. So the network layer provides services to direct packets to other networks. Okay. So if you are not in the same LAN, network layer through the routers with the routing job you send to the remote network. Now who would you call remote network? The de devices that are not directly connected, directly attached with you, that far out devices are called remote and definitely if you have the encapsulation you have to unpack the encapsulated message the other side the destination that's called de-encapsulation there are several network layer protocols in existence okay but the most commonly implemented ones are ipv4 and ipv6 as i said in the very first day of the series of lectures it's not only ipv4 and ipv6 it has got apple talk novel and um other network layer protocols, but the most common ones are version 4 and version 6 are IP. So encapsulating an IP at the network layer, it encapsulates the transparent information because network layer is one layer down or layer actually um, below the transport layer by adding the IP header information for the purpose of delivery to the destination host. Okay. So the IP header says the same from the source to the destination host. As I said just uh, in the last lecture, we mentioned that the IP header, that means the IP addresses are never changed. Your source and destination address of IP never changed. The thing gets changed is the MAC addresses, which is the frame information. The process of encapsulating data layer by layer enables the services at different layers to scale without affecting other layers. Routers implement different network layer protocols currently over a network and use the network layer packet header for routing. So the protocol IPv4 and IPv6, this is route forwarding protocol. But the last paragraph, they say is routers implement different network layer protocols concurrently. Now different network layer protocols, these network layer protocols are routing protocols like RIP, OSPF, BGP, EIGRP and such. RIP, routing information protocol. Uh, other one is called forwarding protocol. The examples of forwarding protocol is IPv4, IPv6, but the examples of routing protocols are RIP, OSP, VIGRP, BGP, and so on. So the purpose of routing protocol is to get the best path. You have one protocol for this router to that one, and maybe another protocol from this router, same router to another router. Yeah, it, it, it may happen. What actually Robert asked me to get the question for online viewers, is it common that in between two routers, same protocol, and then from that second one to the third, another protocol? Yes, it may happen. But then, then there will be a process called redistribution. Okay. So say, for example, if all people in Australia speak in English, and then those who are going abroad, like in foreign countries, they, don't, they may not speak the English. They have a different protocol, different language. So if we take the analogy... Protocol is like a language. Here we speak English, but in other parts they speak different language. Then how these different language people can talk to English-speaking people? 
there is a redistribution process in data communication, like the interpreter in a language barrier cases, right? So that 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 is a chapter in CCNB level, but it may happen. And even a same person, like in our daily life, a same person can speak different languages. I can speak and understand four languages, right? So if this is the case, so that four languages is no problem for me. But some people can may speak only or may speak only one language. It's 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 different to different people. Okay. So a router can have different routing protocols configured as well. Like different language you can speak, a single router can have different routing protocols inside. It is also possible. Okay. And in the CCN2, we'll find out if you can speak different language, which of the language you would be speaking now for your current situation. You have a priority based on the situation. The same way, if a router can understand different routing protocol, which routing protocol will be used for current situation, that is a way to determine that as well. So, characteristics of IP, IP was designed, IP as a forwarding protocol, was designed as a protocol with low overhead. That means not much extra information, as, as minimum information need, that minimum information, not overwhelming information. It provides only the functions required to deliver a packet from the source to destination. As I said, my analogy, it's like a driver of the uh, delivery van. It doesn't know what is inside the person in that van. He doesn't know. He just carries from source A to B. His job, the postman's job, is to deliver the packet. He doesn't know what's inside the packet, right? The same here for the IP. IP is a carrier only. He doesn't know what is inside that packet. What message he's carrying, he doesn't know that. An IP package is sent to the destination the prior establishment of a connection. Do you know when the postman will come to your house? You don't know that. It's not a courier that, or it's not a delivery of a furniture that they will tell you, okay, I'm coming in one hour time. It doesn't happen that way. Postman can come at 10 o'clock in the morning. He may come at 11, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and so on. You don't know. So when you're back your home this today, you see there is a letter waiting to be picked up from your letterbox. That's what you know. But when it is being delivered, you don't know. Same here, an IP packet is sent to the destination without prior establishment of connection. That means you don't, it's not connection-oriented protocol. If you have a connection-oriented protocol, that's something different, like TCP IP, like HTTP. To send a web server information, you have to have a connection first. You have a TCP IP connection, three-way handshake first. Hey, are you the web server? Yes, I'm the client. Can you send me this? Like a connection is there, then you can do this information dispatching. But in IP cases, it doesn't need to send a message to the destination, hey, I'm coming, I will be at home. It doesn't need to send that. So it's not a connection related protocol. It doesn't know what he's carrying. IP is also not designed to track and manage the flow of packets. It cannot track like what's been designed. It is a best effort delivery mechanism. No, it doesn't. So IP has no actually uh, information of TCP or IP. It has got the information of transport layer. As I said in the last slide, so at the network layer, IP encapsulates the transport layer segment by adding an IP header of the purpose of the delivery to the destination. So you have the information of segment, but it has nothing to do with the TCP and UDP. When we're talking as an IP as a protocol, we're now discussing what are the attributes of IP. IP is a not connection oriented protocol. It doesn't know what it's carrying. It doesn't uh, track any flow control. And again, it also is not designed to actually, it's just actually best effort delivery. Like a postman see that the name of the destination person or the address, he goes there, <clears throat> but if the address is wrong, say for example, there is no 255 in the street, there is no holding address by that number. Someone incorrectly put it, but the postman doesn't know whether it exists or not, right? He will go. There is 235, but there is no 255. What he can do then? He cannot do anything. He tried. He went to Flinders Street, but as this address doesn't exist, he will come back and send it back to the post, like the central GPO or whatever. Okay, I could not drop it. That's it. He tried. Best effort. So IP works like that. If the address is wrong, it cannot be sent. If the address is correct, it will be sent. Who is that man? Best effort. This, it's the best effort delivery, yeah. So it's, it's just just made because my three, um, I three, 
and Mac or is it is it is it is it is an IP is it fair to say it's an IP layer but on um but between you know between links I don't know how is it no because it's layer four has got the, um, the segment TCP, info UDP a very good question what points. happens what Trevor actually what uh, Chetan asked here he asked how it works so in the application layer right and then transport layer and then internet layer or network layer which is the TCP IP layer uh, OSA layer 3 and then you have network access layer now application the protocol data unit is data transport is segment if it is a non real time application right and this is the packet here and this is frame and bits right frame is for data link and this what happens when you are going down from transport to internet this segment information has a, its own information like port addressing port information like the application identifier which application individual communication i had a question yesterday from trevor like what is the you know the drop down thing matching the thing so we said individual communication with the applications is to the transport layer so the transport layer adds extra information port number reliability segment information so that's the extra pdu along with the data so data comes to transport layer so that's data plus this extra information in transport layer that is called segment data comes down the real real intention of us is to send the data right so data comes down to transport layer transport layer as is extra information port addresses of individual application and that total package now is called segment segment comes down so this is now the segment segment comes remember inside the segment you have your raw data anyway so segment comes down so if you have segment segment has got data anyway so if and then you add extra information IP address this total information is now called packet packet goes down and then don't forget that inside this you have the original data anyway it's being encapsulated packet goes down and then you have your destination MAC address source MAC address and all the flow control information like that header and trailer of the frame plus your data that is called frame so it works like that. So every layer is adding up. And that's why I said envelope putting in another envelope. This is the source side. On the destination side, when you receive, you say, is it for me? Because this is me. The, my name is John. And it's for me. And who, which John it was targeted? One printer state. Or you unpack. And you get the network layer. And you say, which application is email? You add the, the port address. You unpacking. D encapsulation on the destination side. Because TCP and UTP protocols are defined on transport layer. That's correct. But, but to do, you still end up passing it low layers. Yes. You know, so, sort of, so, yeah. so that's why it's embodying. Like it's it's actually putting up extra information every layer. You're adding extra information. You call a new name. You go down. You call again a new name and so on. That's so, so the packet layer does have IP addressing and the, um, the network layer has MAC addressing. Network layer has got only IP addressing. In here you have the port address. Segment has got the port address. So the data link layers. Data, data link layer has got the MAC address. So, so the network layer has got IP. Network layer has got IP. And, and the data link has got um, MAC address. Yeah. 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 And then, then just the one of the ATA ports is the transport plus the protocols to actually. Exactly. The, yes. The channels. Yes. yes. So you set up the channel using the transport layer. And then within that, the Yes. That's correct. Transport layer has not only just the port, it has got the quality, reliability, other things. That's what they have the and they break it in number of small pieces, segment, datagrams and so on. So I just short here simplified versions, just one information of addressing port in transport layer, IP address in network layer, MAC address in data link layer. And once being added this extra information, they have a new name of that layer. Segment, packet, and frame. Obviously, <coughs> 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 putting down the right hand side, like you've got the A, T, S, T, N, T, P. Obviously, the T 
think for their job and the same way that faculty and stuff come in from the outside. That's correct, yeah. So, do you, do you have anything? Uh, we, we, for that one, I don't have anything. But as I said earlier, for the OSS seven years, please do not take salespeople advice. Please do not take salespeople advice. P for physical, D for data link, and for network layer from the bottom. So that's how you can remember the seven layers of OSI. Okay. So it's like an acronym for the P for physical layer, please. D for data link layer, do. N for network layer, not. T for transport layer, take. S for session layer uh, sales, P for uh, people for presentation, and advice for application. Please do not take salespeople advice. I remember talking about a pretty free thing, make a great story. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> That's a good one as well. Because one of the students asked me the other week, because he needed an acronym for his networking class, and I looked at it and said, a pretty sweet thing, make a great sport, I said, and then Mark said, Pretty sweet thing that would be sport. That's how I uh, that's <laughs> top, to bottom, top to bottom as well. I never had top to bottom. This is so an add on with me. Oh, uh, there is nothing in my stock is for there that. Any it's uh, only four of them. Data segment packet range. Yeah, and the bits for the physical layer. Five. Data is for data is for <laughs> application presentation yeah. and session. Transport layer is segment. If it segment is only if it is non real time applications, but in transport layer it will be called datagram if it is real time applications. So real time applications examples are voice over IP, DHCP, DNS, DFTP, and so on. And B. Yeah. And B belongs to physical level. D belongs to network access layer in TCP IP, but D is its own layer of OSI data link layer. So it's actually data. Segment, packet, frame, and bits. So data. data, segment, Sequence. segment, segment, segment. Oh, yeah. segment, packet, frame, bits. Raw bits in physical layer. Yeah. Once it's encoded, it's only zero and one. That's physical layer. Frame is the data link layer. Network layer is the packets. Segment. Or datagram relies on which type of application is on transport layer, and the upper layer is data. So, yep, we are going back to the IP connection uh, thing now. Like, what is the? They are now actually making this. What we explain, it's now coming one slide. Like IP is connection layers. As I said, uh, it doesn't need to tell before it sends the or before it reaches the destination. So the postman. Um, example is here so the driver is coming but not letting us know prior like I'm coming or I have delivered and so on so that's why this IP is a connectionless protocol IP is the best effort delivery if it's if it is um, if it, it is unreliable because uh, you send a letter to someone else if the address is wrong that that goes nowhere okay because the address was wrong so that's why it's unreliable but if the address is correct the postman will try his best to get it there but if the address was correct, true, but the guy left that place, address was correct, one printer still exists, but John doesn't live there anymore. What the postman can do? He would deliver John's parcel on one printer state, but John doesn't live there. So it's unreliable in that way as well, right? So it's the best effort delivery. It's not postman's fault because that guy doesn't live there anymore or that <laughs> thing. So media independent. So IP is media independent. It can go through optical, wireless, copper, coaxial. It, it can send through any, any media. It doesn't need to be a media um, uh, oriented um, delivery. So this is a look of an IP version 4 packet header. So it is a look of IP version 4. In here you see that you have the version. Version is for version 4 and 6 with different combinations of binary bits. It will represent, is it for version 4 or version 6? You have a uh, differentiated service or uh, which is used to determine the priority of each packet on the network. So this is actually quality of service. Remember we said in the very, uh, maybe the first day class, that quality of service is one of the major thing we have to consider. So how do you know this packet has to be transmitted earlier than others? So it's like that. 
if the prime minister needs to be sent something, it has more priority than if it is a regular person, right? So if the voice is the packet, then postman will treat it differently. The IP will treat it differently. But how do you know this is voice packet? How do you know this is for prime minister? How do you know this is for me? So you have to tag something. So that's that's in your differentiate services. So it will tag voice, video, and regular data differently. And that's how IP protocol will know, oh, this has more priority, so I have to deliver it first. Prime minister should be delivered first, then someone else. Voice should be delivered first, then video, then data. So this field, the DSCCP, this field determines that. Time to leave. This field limits the lifetime of packet. It's decreased by one at each order along the way. So what happens if a postman comes to your place, one print the strip, that's why you leave, right? He knocks the door, okay? He knocks the door, he knocks the door, he kicks the door. No one's still coming out, what he'll do? He'll come up. He's not going to wait the whole 24 hour, seven, 365 days. He has to deliver someone else as well. So time to leave is like that. I tried my best, I went through this router, you gave me the path. I followed that path, I tried to go there, but I knocked the door, no one is coming, no one is responding. So I said, oh, no one leaves, I come back. So time to leave is how long will you try to deliver? So time to leave is limiting the lifetime of a packet. It is decreased by one each router along the way. So say for example, you have five hops, hop is a router. So the destination is five hops, five routers away from you. So if the delivery man, the postman, is one hop far from the GPO, then it will be four, and then three, then two, and then one. And then if it is not reachable, he will say, I don't know how to deliver it. He will come back to the GPO. Is there a default value? There is no default value to do that. It depends on how far um, the destination is. But as soon as it reaches the zero level, it says, I cannot deliver anymore. So what's the default? So if you want to ping, You can see that, you can see that TTL value, and the TTL value is different for different uh, destinations, yes. Oh, I see that. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the, the video demonstration of sample IPv4 headers in, in your uh, online material. If you look at that slide on your online material, you'll find that. Now, limitations of IPv4 is depletion. We discussed that. IPv4 is only 24, 32 b 2, to, 2 raised to 32 bit can give maximum 4.5 billion and internet routing table is expansion, right? So, routing table contains the routes to different networks in order to make the best path determination. A more, as more devices and servers are connected to the network, more routers are, routes are created. A large number of routes can slow down the router. So, it's like that. If you have a, think about that. What is the router do, does? Router keeps a table, which is called routing table. What is the routing table? It is the information of the best possible paths to our different destinations. But if you have so many information in your head, in your brain, can you process things quicker? Because you have overwhelmed already. You have so many in your brain already. Your, your brain is, you have so much. So you cannot really do even a simple job. As the routing table is getting expanded because of different varieties of objects are connected these days, so it is an, a problem with that because internet routing table is expanding exponentially. So that is also a problem. Lack of end-to-end -end connectivity. Network address translation was created for devices to share a single IP address. So we said private address, public address, right? So if we use private address locally as many times, and they are not routable, then how our local device can get internet? Can you can you follow my question? If I mean private address are non-routable, that means they are constrained within the LAN, then how my LAN devices can get internet? So there must be a mechanism, even though they are LAN, they still can serve internet, they can still fetch information from internet. How? That is net. The job of NET, Network Address Translation is, it converts our, or it translates our private address to a public address. When it does it, it translates the private address from LAN to a public, which is routable internet address. But when it does it, it has a limitation. The limitation is, then you cannot track back who was the private address, because now you are translated. So it's like that. If we, are, if we have a translator in between two, different language 
um, you know, speaking person, once the language has been translated and other people, they don't really know what exactly was told. Interpreter does not It's a funny story, right? Sometimes maybe you are swearing to someone or you are in a bad mood. The translator maybe skip it and just say the good words. Possible, right? But as a, as a different language person, I don't know what actually, actually was told. I just need to rely on the translator told me what. So when it is private address translated to a public address, you lose the end-to-end -end connectivity. You just merely see the public space, not the private thing. So that is a problem. Why? Because you might have a web server in your private space, which you cannot access anymore. You cannot go directly to your end-to-end -end device. So that is that is another limitation of IPv4. Why you have to do the net? Because we wanted to conserve the IP addresses so that we can have private addresses and translate so that we can solve the depletion of IP address a little bit. But that brings another problem. We have a solution, but that brings another problem, a side effect. It's like medications. You have a medicine, medicine but that medicine gives another problem. Okay. So now to solve that, we introduced version 6 of IP, IPv6, which is 128 bits, and it's in the early 90s we started that massively. So it eliminates the need of NAT because NAT is IPv6 is 340 undecided number, 36 leading zeros. Okay, so it's a big number space. So you don't get panic of you know having a private public block. So if you don't have private public block, if you don't have the concern of subreading, you don't need to worry about the NAT. So there are roughly enough IPv6 addresses for every grain of sand on Earth. <laughs> now, we have been telling this last 10 years, maybe not every grain of sand anymore in another 20 years. Because the growth, as I said, I have maybe millions of hairs in my hair. Did I count how many hair I have? If each of these needs a sensor and connected, we're running out soon, right? <laughs> it's like that. And it, it will be the case sooner or later, the, the way we're moving. Now you see that how IPv6 header looks like. This was IPv4 header. It's too much information. As it's too much, that means you have heavy load. It goes slower. But in IPv6, it's much less. So it's, faster. it's faster. You 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 took off what is not so much necessary. Information is pretty similar. They call it in different terms, but it's much less information needed for IPv6 as an overhead. That's why IP can go faster. So if you think of a postman coming with a motorbike, if he has 20 kilos worth of load, the motorbike will go slower, maybe 40k speed. But if the motorbike the spokesman has only 5 kilo worth of load, he can go a bit faster, maybe 70, 80k speed. So IPv6 works that way because he has less load. Like, like, a truck. like a truck. It goes faster. So we, we just explained that advantages of IPv6 over IPv4 using the simplified or less number of headers. Um, auto configuration of addresses. Elimination of the need of network address translation, hierarchical network architecture for routing efficiency, and so on. So now they're going detail of the headers of IPv6. So you have the same version. Version has to be there because otherwise, how the IP will know is it version 4 or version 6? The version field stays there. So if the version field, which is a 4-bit binary combination, if the version field is 0110, that means it's version 6. Because 0110 is 6 in decimal, right? So that's how it is actually explain traffic class instead of the quality of service you know the dssp dscp the differentiated services here you have the traffic class in ipv6 flow level 20 20 bit flow level suggests that all packets with the same flow level receives the same type of handling by routers payload length next header next header is the ttl what you had ttl in ipv6 that is called next header Hop limit, source IP address, and destination IP address. So this, is the header, right? this is the header information. The extra information on top of data. Yeah, and then the data should come. Data should come. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Now, the second topic, we have four topics in this chapter. The second is routing, like how, what routing does and so on. 
So how a host routes? So an important role of the network layer is to direct packets between hosts. You have to direct packets toward the base path, right? A host can send a packet itself. It can send a packet to a local host. It can send packet to a remote host. So when it is sending to a itself, that is the packet to yourself, 127.001, loopback address. Remember that I said specific special address? That's what we don't count 127 as a class A address. You also thing, yeah, I mean, That's, as well as, as well as the loopback. Loopback is you're pinging yourself. Loopback is pinging yourself. That's why it's the name looping back, like coming back to yourself. You can ping your own IP address as well, in addition to loopback. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So local host is the host on the same local network, not yourself, but someone else. You are dot one, someone is dot ten in the same block. That's the local host. So what the host is doing, the host can talk to himself, host can talk to someone else in the same network. Host also can talk to someone else in a different network, remote network. And he needs the gateway. He needs a gateway for remote network. True. Source IP address and subnet mask is compared with the destination address and subnet mask in order to determine the host in on the local network or remote network. If the subnet mask is different, that means you are not in the same network. If the subnet mask of all devices are same, that means you are in the same network. Okay. Default gateway is the network device that can route traffic out to the other networks. The router is usually the default gateway. This occurs when the destination host is not on the same local network as the sending host. The default gateway will know where to send packets using the routing table. How the router will know what to send? You want to send something to a web server which is not in your own LAN. How the router know it? Yes, because <coughs> router will connect another router and they have an agreement what information they will share. And that agreement, that rules is routing protocol. Protocol is an agreement, a rule. So routing protocol helps the routers to make the routing table and through use the routing table, router can pass your information to a very far out in network. The sending host doesn't need to know where to send the packet other than to the default gateway. So as, an, as a source, I don't need to know how my packet will be gone. What I, also, uh, what I just need to know, who is my default gateway? If I can get to my default gateway, he will deal my job. So default gateway we understood. <clears throat> so host routing tables. So on a Windows source, you you can you can get a routing table in your Windows machine. Don't get that misleading information like routing table is only for the router. You have your routing table for your Windows machine. What is the command? Route print is the command to get the routing table in your host machine. If you if you give a command route print in Windows machine or netstat hyphen r you'll see the routing table, how your own machine can go somewhere else, via which router and which interface and so on. Is it dash R? Yes, netstat dash R or route print. So a router's routing table contains directly, routing table contains what? Routing table, table, table is a database. So what information you have in that database? It has got directly connected routes. That means router is connected directly with whom? And then it has got remote routers. These routes come from remote networks connected to a direct network and it has got a default route. What is default route? Remember I mentioned the IP address 0.0.0? .0 That's the default route. The default route is where the packet is sent when a route doesn't exist in the routing table. So if I explain this on the board, it is like that. What is directly connected network for a router? What is the remote network for a router? And what is the default route for a router? So imagine, imagine I'm a router and I have two interfaces, gigabit 000, gigabit and gigabit 01. I have two arms, two hands. These are my two different sides. So do you think me personally need to ask you what I have in my right hand? I don't need to. My brain knows I have my blue marker on my right hand. My brain knows I have nothing on my left hand, right? So that's like a directly connected network. So if you have a router 
which has two interfaces and you have PC connected or via switch whatever, then you don't need to have a routing protocol because router can handle himself how to get information from here to him to the end. So if I have my right hand marker, I want to pass to my left hand, I'll just pass like that. I don't need to help anyone. I don't need to ask Chelton, hey, help me to give my right hand marker to my left hand. I can deal it myself, right? So the same way, PCA can ping PCB to the same router if they are connected to the same. That's called directly connected network. You got my example? But if the situation is like that, if I have a, this router connected to another router and that router connects to this, the situation, the demonstration would be like that. I have my marker. I'm shaking hands with my mate, someone else. Imagine this is my, this is another person, this white space here. And I hold him and behind him, he has another thing. If he doesn't want to disclose what he has in his hand, how would I know? So we need to set a rule. Hey, hey whiteboard, I'll tell you what I have in my right hand side. Will you tell me what you have in your left hand side? If we have that rule, set of rules, then only I can connect that marker to the neighbor's marker and so on, right? So the same thing happens here. If you don't have an agreement here in between these two routers, this PC will never be able to ping here. But how far you can ping? You can ping from here to here because it's within the same, this arm and that brain. You can ping here, you can ping even here because the same, still the same exit interface, but you never can ping him because he doesn't want to come to, he doesn't want to tell you who he is. If he, if he has got the protocol then. So when you, this is a, this is a directly connected network though, but this is not directly connected network for this guy. He cannot come here without any routing protocol. It will never ping. So you need only a routing protocol once you need to come here. Because that's behind his control. This device has no control to reach him. This is this router's discretion or control. So to come from this PC to all the way here, you need to have a routing protocol. And that is called remote network for him. So routing table has got information about your directly connected network. Routing protocol has got information about your remote network. And routing protocol has got information. Now, this is the internet cloud. Okay. And this cloud is connected by some other way. There are so many other links. Imagine. He doesn't know directly how he can take someone here, someone. He doesn't know. He doesn't know himself. This guy doesn't know. But this guy wants to go somewhere else which is not known by these devices. Because this guy is not limited to only known destination. He, is, he can go anywhere at any time. So default route is if your destination is not known, I repeat, default route is used. If your destination is not known, then router use a default route to send somewhere else who, can, who may help you, and then may help you, and then may help you and keep going as cascading. When the destination is not known. When the destination is not known. If you know that I like to go there and this device know that okay to go there I like to connect router two, then it is known. You can use the routing protocol in between them and you can pass it. But if he says uh, he expresses intention which this router, that router, no one knows, then you would be using default route. And eventually, if this real destination really exists, you eventually will get there. If the destination doesn't exist, it will be dropped. This guy is expressing interest, I like to go to a moon moon or sun or Pluto or some other flag. If it doesn't exist, how you can send there? If it exists, this guy doesn't know how he can take the flight all the way to moon or sun. This guy doesn't know, but if it is different route, someone will know it anyway. But if there is no planet by the name of X, Y, Z exists, how you can take him there? Then it will be dropped. That's what I'm saying. So default route is used only for when the destination by the initial host device is unknown and initial default gate is unknown. Use the default specific route for any unknown. So someone might help with that with that flavor. Someone might help. If it doesn't exist, then default route will not even help. So that would involve DNS. It will involve DNS protocol. So going back.
So this is a look of a routing table. So if you give the command on a router show IP route, I repeat, if you give a command on the router show IP route, it will show you like this. And there are meaning, this is actually output in here is omitted just to save some space. Here are lesions, what is D, what is L, what is C. There are meaning of this L, C, D at, at the very top. So C for connected network, D for EIGRP, O for OSPF. That means you reach this destination network over an OSPF routing protocol, over an EIGRP routing protocol, over a connected. Via means next stop router, via the IP address of next stop router. D C things no. D means EIGRP. So the to get your destination network, if it is D at the beginning, that means in between the two routers to go to your destination, the routing protocol used was EIGRP. Yeah. And O for OSPF, C for connected. Like to go to the destination, it was connected. Yes. It is a bit weird. E should be EIGRP, but it is D. Yes. And OSPF is open for anyone. What's the L? So L for loop, uh, local loop, local host routes. So in here, this is actually output omitted, but the, the name of this, what is L, what is C, it's actually at the top. In a real router, when you give the command, you see that what L is, what C is, what D is, and so on. So here, they just ignored that, just cut it and cropped it. And here, as a look, so it says that on R1, because that's what is highlighted, the routing table for R1, it says C for 192.168.10.0. See that? 192.168.10.0 is connected via the Z00 interface, and see the gigabit Ethernet is Z00. So that's the connected network. But if there was a protocol, then it will be in here, R or OSPM in here coming up. But we'll deal most of these in CCNA2, so don't stress too much. You will not have anything. Routing protocol is more in detail in CCNA2 and onwards. But this is just an intro, how we can interpret the routing table. Now, this slide was for directly connected routing table entries. This one is for remote route entries. So here you see it's D, D for EIGRP. And which network? The destination network is... 10110. So 10110 in R1 is far away. It's over R2. So that's the remote network. And this 90 is to administrative distance. And this is the metric and, and so on. So it is actually routing protocols, uh, router and routing protocols. Also. So I'm just a bit hesitant to ex explain more in detail here because this is more of the scope in CCNA2. But this is how we can find the information from a routing table. Routing table keeps information. So this many information you can get depends on is it directly connected or remote network. So C is to the port. The C is not the port. C is, the, C is to represent the network you are connecting is directly connected network of yours. Like in the last slide, C here is to represent that network you connected directly. There will be another entry C one hundred one sixty eleven dot zero. L is the actually local um, host route. What happens? L is local host route from version fifteen dot four iOS. This new entry is coming up. If you are using a router version twelve dot four, you don't see this L entry. From the new versions, you get it because there is a new concept called multi uh, topology routing. So you can have Different topology for the same routing, but you enable out of different only one topology, maybe voice topology or maybe data. I'm not going detail for that, but that is from version 15.4, and this multi-topology routing was from the very beginning for IPv6 case, but we are dealing here only IPv4, so just just keep it simple as as, as of now. So show IP route also show the next hub address. So to go to that remote network. To go to that remote network, you go via 209 on 65 200 226. And see, 209 on 65 200 224 is the network address. Dot 226 is the next stop from our one. So what you're saying to go 10110 to go 10110, 
via R2, you have to go to this IP address, which is the via 209-165-200-226. Yeah, that's what I was asking before, yeah. Yeah. So, now the video demonstration and the routers, what routers look and how, what model. Remember, I said that different model of routers will come. So, this is the slide starting off. So, what is a router, by the way? Router is a computer. But it doesn't actually allow us to play music, do the word processing. It's just a computer, but to assist networking jobs as an intermediate device in between the LANs. Cisco routers are designed to meet the needs of a wide variety of businesses and networks, such as business, wide area network, and service providers. So Cisco routers can be used for a small business, for wide area network, and for service providers. The focus of CCNS certification is only, the scope is only the branch facility. So this is the motherboard of a router look. It looks pretty similar like a PC motherboard, right? You have the BIOS, you have the power board, you have the RAM, you have the power supply, everything pretty much same like your PC. And we have got an open motherboard in the glass cabinet opposite to our another room. It's an open motherboard. If you want to see the real motherboard, it's open there in the glass mm -hmm. cabinet. In front of 602 room, there is open motherboard. So, <clears throat> router has the RAM. Router has different kinds of RAM. Um, router has different kinds of memory. RAM, NVRAM, Flash, and ROM. Like PC. PC has ROM, PC has RAM, and PC has other memory like the hard disk. Here, we have the same different kinds of memory. So, RAM is a volatile memory. So, if you turn off the router, whatever you have in the RAM, it goes off. ROM is a non-volatile memory used to store crucial operational instructions and a limited iOS. Remember when the iOS was not working in our lab in the very first day, it came like ROM mon. Remember? ROM mon. Read only mon. Read only memory, monitor. So that is the ROM. The operational system was not working. Still, you had some basic commands and limited so that you can recover that digital stuff. So that is the ROM, non-volatile memory, but you have a very limited iOS instruction and command set so that you can fix the operating system. NVRAM is also a non-volatile memory. Yes. To ROM, yes. NVRAM is a non-volatile memory used as a permanent storage as for the startup configuration file. The name of the file is called startup configuration and that file is stored permanently in NVRAM if you give the command copy run start. Okay. Flash is also a non-volatile memory used as permanent storage for the iOS and other operating system files such as long or backup file. So your iOS is actually in the flash memory. Your startup config file is in the NVRAM your limited iOS instruction set is in the ROM and your real-time common sets are on the RAM. So these are the four different kinds of memory in a router. When a router boots finish, when, what it happens, that's what I'm going to discuss now. So inside a router, what do you have? You have power supply, you have cooling fan, you have synchronous dynamic RAM, non-volatile CPU, like, like your PC. You have heat shields, you have AIM, advanced integration module, similar to your PC. At the outside interfaces, you have console port, gigabit Ethernet port, compact flashlight, USB port these days, and so on. And you have the LAN and wide area network interfaces. Secure shell, telnet, this is how differently you can connect a router, console, auxiliary port. So that's our packet tracer activity and different icons. So Cisco routers and switches load the iOS image and start a configuration file into the RAM where they are booted. That's what I was going to say. When you turn on a router, what happens? You turn on the router, router is turning on and is booting up. While it finish, while, while it is booting, it calls a small file called bootstrap. Where from? From the ROM. And the job of that bootstrap file is to call the bigger file. What is that bigger file? That is the real I internet operating system, the iOS. The image. the image. That image is stored where? In flash. So bootstrap file loads. If the bootstrap is working fine, it loads. And that's the kernel. So kernel 
calls the image from the flash it loads and then once the image is operational functional properly then it calls the startup config file if you start up config file is blank that means it is the brand new router and then it finished the booting then the startup config file loads to a ram what you have what do you have in your ram you have the running configuration file so startup config file copied over running config file and you add on new commands new instructions if you don't save it it is whatever you had before you even start if you save it that running config now is saving back to startup config and new information for the next day and so on exactly there is no hard drive but there is flash yeah. flash is working here as a hard drive but a small space instead of one terabyte maybe some megabyte level So that's the boot up process I mentioned. Perform the post power on self test. Load the bootstrap program during the power on self test. Router executes diagnostic from ROM on various hardware components. After the post, the bootstrap program is copied from ROM into RAM, and its job is to locate the Cisco iOS and load it into the RAM, as I mentioned just a few seconds back. So once you locate and load the Cisco iOS software, typically the iOS is stored in a flash memory and copied into RAM for execution by the CPU. Locate and load the startup configuration file or enter setup mode. The booster program then copies the startup config file into RAM and be RAM. Becomes the running config. The command show version because while it is booting, it goes so fast and maybe you are not very keen to find out what information is being displayed. So there is a command called show version which displays what happens while it was booting. I repeat, the purpose of the show version command in executive prompt is to display what happens while the router was booting. And it is in your control. You can you can actually give the page bar to go more page and next page and so on. Because while it is booting, you just cannot follow everything. It, it is uh, like a teleprompter, it goes on, right? But show version command, while the router finished booting in executive prompt, it will have number of pages. When it finish, show version command is on executive prompt or executive mode, and you give the command to see what happens while it was booting. This is an outcome or output of a show version, and you see this is on hash prompt. This is enable or executive prompt, and you see the version of the software is this, and um, this is two two gigabit Ethernet interfaces. This shows actually while it was booting, but once it's finished booting, you are already in the executive prompt. You can revise. And if you want to know what is the version name of your iOS, you can give this command. If you want to know how many interfaces you have in your router, you can give this command if, instead of going back to your comms room. So show version command is very important command. So these are the purpose of issuing the show version command. Now we're going to configure Cisco router, which we already have done yesterday, like the uh, configuring an executive password, configure a telnet password, virtual teletype password. So they are now explaining here that things. Configure an interface IP address. And these are some verification commands. All verification commands, mostly the show commands are in executive prompt. Show IP interface break, show IP route, and such. They are all in executive or enable mode. It will not work in your command line, config mode, or any other prompt. If you really want to use the show commands on config mode, there is a workaround. What it is, just do at the beginning. And that is easy because otherwise you have to exit all the time and do the show and come back again. Config is a bit annoying. So instead of going back and forward, it from, mostly works. It mostly works. Right. Default gateway host, nothing new. The IP address of the router is the default gateway for the whole network of that LAN. Default gateway for a switch, the command is given by IP default gateway in your executive prompt. Why do you need a default gateway for a switch? Because switch needs only an IP address if it needs to be remotely managed, telnet SSH. So once it's remotely managed, it needs to a default gateway as well, like PC. But how do you set? PC has got a graphical user interface. You can go properties, but in switch, you don't have it. 
So you have to give the command. The command is IP default gateway. And what will be the default gateway? The same router interface IP for that LAN will be the default gateway for the switch as well. So, so what do you mean that? Say, if I go back to slide on the board, as I said yesterday, we don't need a switch and IP address, but switch needs an IP address. This is the switch, and these are the PCs, these clients, and this is another PC over a router. You like to manage from this PC that switch. So you're tailing from here the switch. And then you have the PC. In here, you can go graphical user interface default gateway. But how you can do that thing? So command is IP default gateway, and that is the interface IP. What IP do you create? That IP? The router interface IP. Oh, so you put in the IP of, of the, the router for the IP connected to it. No, IP of the router, that port, not the port directly connected. It can connect to any port. No, no, you put in the IP address of the router port that's connected to the switch. That's correct. Packet tracer, and this is the summary of this chapter. That's the first two chapters, and that's how I end up my live session for Network Clear.